the USSR was notably the second nation to build and detonate nuclear weapons, with them following the United States by four years. But given the devastation that the USSR had suffered during the Second World War, how did it build such an expensive weapon? How did the Soviet Union get its first nukes? So, as most of you will know, the idea of splitting the atom and making nuclear weapons was not a new one as of 1945. The problem was that the process would be incredibly expensive and the USSR didn't exactly have a lot of spare change. As such, no nuclear program would begin in earnest until the Germans were defeated. But that doesn't mean that the Soviets weren't on the lookout for other nations trying to build the bomb. And it didn't take long for the USSR to work out that the Americans were trying to build one. The first way they learned was that American scientists stopped publishing papers on nuclear topics. And the second way was good old fashioned espionage. Notably via the British delegation to the American nuclear project who would report back to Moscow. So it's that simple right? The Soviets simply stole all of the details from the Americans and reverse engineered the bomb four years later. Alas, no. Whilst the USSR did make use of spies and informants embedded in the Manhattan Project, that doesn't mean that they trusted a single word that they said. The USSR's nuclear program at first fell under Lavrenti Beria, the head of Soviet intelligence. And he was, to be frank, quite paranoid. Which was understandable given that he'd only gotten his job after his predecessor had gotten thoroughly Stalined. As such, he didn't want to make any mistakes and so, for the most part, assumed that the Allies were using double agents to feed him misinformation. With that in mind, Soviet scientists were tasked with trying to figure out the theory of the bomb from scratch and they weren't particularly hopeful. That was until Hiroshima and Nagasaki, at which point minds became much more focused. Stalin ordered that the project be massively scaled up and given any money that it needed, and these funds were taken from all across the Soviet budget. This was easy to justify for the Politburo's members because as far as they were concerned, if the USSR didn't build nuclear weapons, it was doomed. The problem for the USSR wasn't a lack of know-how or an issue with the logistics of such a large project. It was the lack of nuclear material. Uranium suitable for use in a bomb had been monopolised by the British and the Americans, and the USSR didn't know if there was any suitable uranium within its own borders and thus it had to go with plutonium which it had plenty of in the Urals but mining it would be far too expensive after the destruction of the war. Not unless they could find a nearly unending source of cheap labour that was. Oh wait. So with the plutonium being mined, the programme could go ahead. Scientists were told to build the bomb from scratch and the intelligence gathered from the United States was used to check the project's progress. The Soviets also made use of German scientists to help who were borrowed after the war but they were kept in a different facility away from everybody else. The project continued to grow until 1949, at which point more than half a million people had contributed. And as the bomb got closer to completion, the Soviets decided to copy the American bomb casing instead of using their own. Because if it failed and the Americans found out, it would look embarrassing. The test worked, the Americans found out anyway, and after this the Cold War truly began in earnest. With both powers then racing to see who could build the first hydrogen bomb. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Korsho Wolf, Kartoitska, Alex Schwinn, Andy McGehy, Jerry Lambdin, Rod D. Martin, AF Firefly, Marcus Arsner, Wyan Hockey, Spencer Lightfoot, Marvin Cassow, Captain Sidog, Kamun Yoon, Winston Kaywood, Miss Izzet, Boogily Woogily, Maggie Paskowski, The McWhopper, Gustav Swan, Calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Copper Tone, Shuenin, Spinning Three Plates, Words About Books Podcast, Jim Strunberg, Words About Books Podcast, and Charles the First.